What's going on YouTube? Gios right here. So today Apple had the WWDC 19 event and of course the iOS 13 has been released for the developers in beta 1. Now the iOS 13 comes with a lot of changes and since it's a major update we're going to talk a little bit about it but we're also going to talk about a vulnerability that has been discovered by Sparky, the developer behind Meridian Jailbreak and also about CD Impactor because this is actually very important. Now for those of you who do not know the event took place a few hours back and you will be able to watch it you know to watch the um, recordings here on the WWDC 19 webpage they will be available shortly and you will be able to watch the entire event I did watch it live and it's been a very good event so but if you want some highlights on what happened you can find them on my Twitter account in here I've been tweeting a lot during the event anything that was important and anything that was you know new and so on now there are many updates to the Mac OS itself the new Mac OS Catalina is going to be uh, released and of course the iOS 13 this is the official name for it and the iOS 13 does have a lot of changes including yes full dark mode for the iOS finally not that inverted crap they used to have in iOS 12 now they have a full dark mode for the system which does actually work for notifications for settings, for applications, and so on. So this is actually quite good. An important highlight is the Photos application. I tweeted about this, and actually they did talk about the uh, the Photos application quite a lot, and this is actually one of the uh, pictures that basically summed up the um, important changes in iOS 13. The Photos application will actually contain a new way to edit photos and a new way to sort them by year, by month. It removes duplicates and so on. It's actually quite good. There is indeed swipe typing on iOS 13, so that is actually good. There's a new share sheet available. And as I said, there are changes to the Siri, to the camera, to the location, to the files application. By the way, the files application now supports USB flash drives and you know micro SD cards and so on, which is again very good. There is support for phones. You can actually get third-party phones in your applications for the first time on iOS, which is actually quite good. Then there is some privacy-related stuff. For example, you can now log in with Apple, which is basically going to be with Face ID in an application instead of using Facebook or Google and so on, which is actually quite good. But the most important thing about iOS 13 is that it's actually much, much faster and they made it more lightweight in terms of applications and in terms of updates. So they actually said that it's going to be much much faster sometimes even two times faster than iOS 12 which is actually something we're all looking forward to now of course the compatibility for the iOS 13 is going to be iPhone 6s and newer so the iPhone 6 and lower will not be supported now the iPod touch 6 generation will also not be supported for the iPod you need to have the iPod touch 7 which was released a few days back if you want to have iOS 13 now for the iPads there is a whole different thing the iOS was spun off in to another operating system called iPadOS starting with this year and the iPad received a ton of updates including multitasking and a better user interface and widgets and a calculator and so on so it does have a lot of features I do encourage you to go ahead and watch the event because there are a lot of things that have to be mentioned and we do not have too much time in this video in here but if you are an iPad user and you want to learn more about the new iPad OS I definitely encourage you to watch the uh, recordings in here on WWDC 19 the same way if you're interested in the new Mac OS and speaking of which do not install the new Mac OS on your Mac right now because Cydia Impactor has to be updated and you will not be able to use it the people who tried to update to the newest version were told by the installer application that the application Cydia Impactor will not not work on the new version of macOS which by the way is in beta so these are not stable releases so don't just go ahead and install iOS 13 or macOS Catalina because these are in first beta which is definitely buggy and of course it can have a lot of stability issues but anyways if you are dependent on Cydia Impactor for anything for applications or whatever do not install the new macOS yet because the Cydia Impactor will stop working now let's talk a little bit about the new vulnerability found by Spark Sparky. Sparky posted this in here, zero day live, and he tagged QWERTY worry up, which is look at the disco. And in this video in here, he basically shows the iOS 13, which by the way, doesn't have any major changes to the home screen or to the icons and so on. The TV application works a little bit different and it does have a, uh, a new icon in there. But overall, there are no major changes 
apparently there is a new HUD for the volume, so that is nice. But I will make a video tomorrow with all the changes in the iOS 13. Anyways, Sparky found a vulnerability and he basically shows it in here. He goes ahead on settings to demonstrate the dark mode, so he's on iOS 13. And then of course he opens an application, which makes the iPhone to actually go ahead and reboot, so it panics the kernel. Now this is a kernel vulnerability apparently since it panics the kernel, you can see from here, but I'm not entirely sure about the details on it or where the vulnerability is, but of course it's nice to find a zero day in the very first iOS 13 beta, just a couple hours after it's been released for the developers. Now of course, inevitably, a lot of you are going to ask me how can I install iOS 13? In order to be able to install iOS 13 right now, you need to have a Mac, you need to have a new newer version of macOS like Mojave or Catalina and of course you need to have the latest Xcode 11 and then of course you need to have a developer account, a paid developer account on Apple in order to be able to access the download center and then of course you will be able to get the IPSW. But please do not install the beta if you are not a developer because it does have bugs. This is a beta for developers, it's not a public beta. So it's the very first version which is definitely buggy untested and it can result in serious damage to your data or to your device if you misuse it. So do not try it or at least make a backup in iTunes before you do so. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Thank you for watching. I am Geosnow and till next time, peace out.